Hey all, this is Tim Vasquez, author of Digital Atmosphere, and some of you over the past three years you've asked me to do a video on YouTube, and I've finally started figuring some of the stuff out, so I figured I'd show you how to use the program, maybe make this into a series at some point. So I'm going to run through some of the basics here. To use Digital Atmosphere, you basically just install it, and you go to Data and Retrieve Data to get started and that will get you set up with the current conditions. Now you can use METAR for the US and Europe. For other parts of the world I would recommend SYNOP. There's much better SYNOP coverage out over the oceans, basically anywhere outside of uh, Japan, South Korea, Europe, and the US. And make sure your dates and times here are correct. I've got 6Z on July 4th and click retrieve and that will start downloading some of the data and it takes about maybe five to ten seconds to process and at that point you can click on this uh, station plot right here the station plot symbol and you can plot your data and we have temperature at the top left and the dew point at the bottom bottom left and the station identifier over on the right the flags that you see sticking out, those are those point into the wind. And for each of these flags that you have on the end, that's 10 knots. Short ones like you see here, those are 5 knots. So you can combine those like here and we're, we'll be talking 15 knots. Now what else can we do with these plots? Say that we don't want identifiers. We can just click on this preferences configuration right here and go to station plots click on that and this shows you the basic composition of these plots that we have on the map. To, do, to remove the identifier just go to this box where it appears and replace that with blank. Maybe we want to add pressure so go to this top right one and go down to altimeter setting or you can use sea level pressure and you're all set and you just Go to Map, Erase, and then plot your new map. And the plots have changed. And you notice that some of them do not have the sea level pressure. That's because sea level pressure is only reported at certain stations that have climatological readings where they can compute a reduction value table. And it also requires 12 hours of observations. So the former is probably the reason that these don't appear here but elsewhere you have sea level pressure. If you want to fix that just go back to your configuration change SLP to altimeter setting and now you will get pressure for all stations. The only downside of altimeter setting is that there are not compensations for diurnal pressure trends so those will show high or low depending on what time of the day to, what time of the day it is also there may be some terrain interactions that cause especially in the rocky mountains those will, those will cause flaky pressure readings and those will not be removed but for, on the plains for just doing severe weather forecasting you can go ahead and and analyze those if you like go to analysis and go to pressure and altimeter setting and you can get a plot of isobars using that altimeter setting, setting value. And if you have sea level pressure available, you can go instead to analysis and pressure and sea level pressure and plot that up. There's some good mapping options in Digital Atmosphere. For instance, if we want to change the base map, we just go to Map and Generate Plot. And to keep things simple, we can just go to Location Preset, change that to maybe Texas and I've made some changes in the program where it plots a whole lot faster you'll see that in the next version. I, one thing I mentioned is I didn't mention is that this is Digital Atmosphere 4.0 with a release date of 2015. This has not been put out yet. This is a in-house uh, development copy and but this will be released sometime I expect in the next week or so. So now we have a new Texas base map if we want to, we can go to Data Plots, and we can put on the, go to Map, Overlay, and Counties. 
see that plotted pretty quick there so there's some good changes there and one enhancement I've made to the program also is I've improved the shape files I don't know if any of you have used shape files but there's a ton of them out there if you use Google search go to data or I'm sorry go to map go to import shape file and I actually keep a collection of these on my hard drive a bunch of different shapefile collections. Let me go up to that. i keep got a directory here called GIS and I've got different shapefiles here. So I'm going to pick the one for National Weather Service. Yeah, never mind. Texas Roads. We'll do Texas Roads. I've got one in here. And I'll choose that. That'll come up with a dialog where you can choose exactly how you want the shapefiles to appear. Normally you don't have to mess with these. In fact, you probably shouldn't unless you're having plotting problems. And I'm going to change the color to gray, kind of a subdued color. And click OK, and it'll plot that row data. And this code is not very well optimized, so it's going to take a few seconds to plot. But you'll eventually get there, and you'll get a nice plot of geographical data. So you're not reliant on the digital atmosphere default files, and you can use government sources and your contractors, whatever your, whatever they release. Shapefiles are a pretty basic, uh, pretty universal format for interchanging geographical data, so they're pretty easy to find. So there we've got all the road plots across Texas, and using that we can plot our data on top of that. Wow, look how crowded it is. If I do a race map, you're going to see the road data disappear. If you don't want that data to dis disappear, let me reconstruct the counties. So we got the map the way we like it. What we have to do is we have to lock it into the map by going to Map and going to Copy Markings to Base Map. So now when you plot data and you go to Map Erase, you'll keep your overlays. So that's pretty handy right there. Now the data was too cluttered. What we want to do is go to Data Plot Crowding right here in this toolbar. We want to drop that down to maybe 80%. Plot the stations again. No, nope, sorry, that's the configuration. Go here. There, now it's a little bit more legible. And I'll show you one other feature here. This setting here uses Windows fonts. If you want to know which fonts they are, go to your configuration, go to Styles, make sure this matches your map, and scroll down to Plots. So it's going to be in here somewhere. This is kind of a long list. It, I guess it's going to be up near the top. Yeah, there we go. Station Plots, right there. So we're using the REL Windows font. So we can change that if we like. You'll have to type in the exact name as it shows in the Windows Control Panel font dialog. And you can also change the size. We can make that 11, for example. So we save changes, go to OK, and if we replot that, look at there, the fonts are a little bit bigger. If you're doing a professional presentation and you've got to have these fonts visible without any aliasing, that kind of thing, you'll want to go to File, Font Mode, and in MC, Inset Raster Font. This is a font that I actually imported manually from source code from the National Meteorological Center from Fortran code written, written in 1968. So this is some of the oldest fonts, computer fonts that exist, and they're still used by NMC, and they look like this. You've probably seen this before if you've used a lot of old National Weather Service products. And I thought this was too valuable to let just disappear into the into the winds of history there. So I've imported, I've included it in Digital Atmosphere, and it gives you a very professional presentation here. And you can use this use this for printouts and PowerPoints and anything where you really have to make sure that that data really shows up and is legible. And before I wrap this up really quick, there are some analysis features you can use. Watch this. I'm going to go to Map, and I'm going to lock even the plots into the, the markings on the base map, so that way if we hit a race, we can start over again. And I'm going to plot sea level pressure. 
So there we go, we got isobars, really easy. Now if I go to map erase, I'll still have that data on there. And I go to analysis and I do temperature analysis. And now I've got plots of temperature isobar isotherms every two degrees. So that's very handy right there too. You can get you can easily find fronts and other boundaries that might be lurking across one part of your forecast area. That's about all I want to do right now. I just want to do a quick 10 minute video and see where things go, but maybe I can make this into a series. See, how, see what happens. So anyway, thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of Digital Atmosphere, just head on to weathergraphics.com and you can pick up a trial version or actually purchase it and give it a shot there. Thanks, we'll see you all next time.